Well, uh, going back to your grandfather, um, he was he was uh, an actor in film and television, and he did encourage you to become a filmmaker, as you said. Uh, yeah. He was also the father in the in the horror movie Invaders from Mars. He was. And uh, were your parents excited when you began working in film? They were very excited. I think my mom was a little worried about it because she did she, she always wanted me to, to be like a doctor or a fireman or something like that. It just wasn't the path I really wanted to do. Um, and, you know, when you're really young, you sometimes go, I don't know, like, I know my grandfather did this professionally, but like, how hard is it to get in the film business? Because at the time that I was thinking about going into it, you know, it's always nice when you have a family member that's in it that can introduce you. But by the time I was going to get in the films, my grandfather was already, he's already been passed away and long gone. Um, so just being a young kid was very influential with him. My grandmother was really the one that pushed me to do it because she's the one that was like, you know, we made a great living off of this when you, and it is something you can achieve. Um, because I just didn't know when the band stuff didn't really work out. I didn't know what my path was going to be. You know, you just, some, when you're young, you're just like, I don't know what to do. You know, I just don't want to be a bum. Um, so I ended up talking to my grandmother and she encouraged me to, to move from Pensacola, Florida and come out to Los Angeles. And then I ended up going, I didn't know where to start. So I ended up going to Los Angeles City College because I had no money, you know, and that was the cheapest thing. I couldn't afford USC or UCLA or AFI or any of these really big, you know, universities. I just, I'm broke. Um, and so Los Angeles City College provided me, you know, basically once I became a resident of California, it was like $11 a unit, you know, and each, each class is like three units. So whatever, you know, that was easy. Um, so I ended up doing that and, you know, I've graduated film school, probably didn't need to go to film school. That's a whole nother topic because I've gotten more education out of being on set. Um, but my grandmother was more influential, but my, my, my parents were very happy with, with the route that I took once they realized that I was doing stuff and it wasn't just, I'm going to go work in movies. And then I move out here and just end up like living, you know, in a working in some place, like in a restaurant or a gas station. <laughs> Um, so you talked about um, how, uh, as a kid, you'd make ho little horror movies. Do any of them still exist? Man, I wish. They're so bad. They're so horrible. And uh, if I could find those, I would love it. I, I, I think they all got wiped out. Honestly, when I moved from Pensacola, we had so many hurricanes come through <laughs> the property that my grandmother still had. And I think it wiped out all my VHS movies that were just... It's a, it's a bummer because they were really funny, but it, it's also one of those things where you're like, I hope no one ever sees those because they're so ridiculous and, you know, so cheesy. But, you know, we were kids, so we were just having a good time, you know. It'd be cool. I'd love, I would personally like to see the stupid stuff that we did because it was really <laughs> just so silly. More nostalgic for me. So before all that, before we found horror movies, what do you remember being afraid of the most? Like, Jeez. you know, I think for me, more things that were scary was because I'm a surfer and Jaws scared me to death, honestly. And just knowing that that is something that could really happen, you know, like they're, like the sharks and things. I remember watching Jaws one time before I actually went out surfing. And the whole time all I could think of was this, where is it? You know, where's that thing? Is he going to pop up and get me? You know, those are the things, I think the real things are what scare me the most. I enjoy like the comedy of like a Nightmare on Elm Street or like the, the Michael Myers things, you know, where they're just, the, the other, you know, they're, I mean, Freddy Krueger is like this crazy, you know, scary thing that gets you in your dreams, you know? And, and he was like, for me, he was top of my list of, of, of the kind of like monsters that in, the, in those movies that I loved him more than like Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers or whatever. Um, but I think the things that scared me the most are things that like could really happen. I mean, honestly, like when I watched The Strangers, that scared the crap out of me because, you know, especially when they're like, why did you, why are you doing this? And they're like, because we can, or because, you know, it's just it like, was, so scary. It's, I believe they said, because you answered the door. Because that's, yeah, it was something like that. I remember that. I just got chills thinking about it. I was like, ooh, because that's like such a simple, scary little thing. And, you know, and it's funny because wherever they filmed that, it felt like Florida to me, like with the. The, the, like the street lamps and like how there were trees around and like kind of the houses were like like kind of like Florida style houses so for me like seeing stuff like that I was like oh god that could really happen so I just got to make sure I look through the peephole of my door before I answer anything you know 
those are the things that scare me more. Not so much the monsters or things like that. It's the reality. It's the real world. <laughs> uh, so kids are normally first introduced through fairy tales like R Little Red Riding Hood or Billy Goat's Gruff. These stories would scare and excite the kids. Uh, do you, did you have a favorite story that scared you? My favorite story was definitely Sleepy Hollow. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, you know, and, and, and that one really, I just love the whole Headless Horseman thing and the Ichabod Crane and, and just the kind of like, you know, I, I remember having like a little book of the story and I remember the imagery being like kind of like very scary to me, but I was also like very drawn to it. Um, that's why I loved whenever Tim Burton did actually the movie, because I just love his vision of Sleepy Hollow. I thought it was super cool, like just and just the visuals that he had at that time, like like doing that. So me growing up, Sleepy Hollow for me was one of my favorite, favorite scary books. I thought it was just such a cool tale. So speaking of kids being drawn to the stories, why do you think kids are drawn to scary stories? I think kids love the excitement. I think, you know, we, hey, we, we watch comedies because we love to laugh. You know, we, 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 we watch scary movies because it's almost like an amusement park ride. You know, it's like, it's like you know, the, the roller coaster ride, the ups and downs, the getting nervous, the like, you know, grabbing onto your friends and screaming when the scares happen and just having the excitement of that. I think that's what draws kids to horror films. Um, I know when I was a kid, that's what I loved. You know, me and inviting my buddies over and back then we would go rent like blockbuster movies and, you know, we'd only rent the movie because it had a VHS cover of like Evil Dead, like with the skull and the eyes looking at you, the Evil Dead 2. And just like not knowing what you're getting into because we didn't read about movies or things like that. We just would get it because it had cool cover art and we'd watch the movies and we were like, you know, either jumping for joy and scared or being like, oh, that was cheesy, you know? So that's that's what I, that's when I was a kid, that's what made me happy about those things. That's what, that's what I enjoyed. Well, were there any like children's movies that were unintentionally scary, like the flying monkeys from Wizard of Oz kind of thing for you? For me, not really, because I'll tell you, my family, I think, because they didn't really monitor what I, me and my sister watched when we were kids. When I was in kindergarten, I saw Escape from New York, you know, which a kid in kindergarten should never see a movie like that. Um, and actually it had a huge impact on me. And I, even down to the music, I would walk around like Snake Plissken with that tune in my head, thinking I was all cool. You know, I'm this little kid, you know, going to the jungle gyms and like, I'm Snake Plissken, you know, like I'm, I'm awesome. That's kind of like the weirdest thing. And then I ended up like HBO would come on at late at night. My parents would kind of like go see their friends and we'd have babysitter or we'd, or, or we'd just watch each other. And we'd watch HBO. We'd see all these like scary movies that would come on after dark. And, you know, it kind of, that was, that was the thing that just, you know, we loved doing that. It was weird. So I didn't, I didn't get much, uh, I'm, I think I'm rambling totally off the subject of what you just asked me, but <laughs> that, that was kind of what we, how we, how we ended up growing up and watching scary movies. So speaking of that, what age do you think it's all right for kids to be introduced to horror? It, nowadays, I think it depends on what horror film you see because there's so many different types. So for me, like the Nightmare on Elm Street's, maybe that's not a good example, like Halloween, you know, it's just, it's a lot of suspense in those movies and it's a lot of, you know, like Michael Myers walking and, and then the kills happen. I think it just really depends on subject matter. But I think if it's really inappropriate stuff that's like very serious or like graphic nudity kind of things, that, that it just depends on the level of what the horror film really is. I think that really, you know, details like what age you should be you should see stuff and also every kid has a you know or teenager they have their own you know views on what they see some things affect people more than the other person for me I loved it I loved blood and gore and I thought it was cool but say my friend who you know and I went to a Christian school which is really weird for me being a you know horror fan but I would invite kids over from the school to like stay the night and we would watch, I'd, I'd be like, oh, we're going to watch this movie. It's so cool. And you know, to me, it was normal. But to them, they'd go home and tell their mom that we watched something like The Gate, you know, that had like all these demons and stuff. And then I would get a call or my mom would get a call and be like, why'd your son let our kid watch this movie? I think it just depends also on the, like the kid, like how much they can take of a scary film or if they can't, because, you know, it's that's a huge factor. But age wise, I'll say it like I was in kindergarten I saw Escape from New York and I saw Cujo and all these movies and I think I turned out okay I mean I hope I did 
<laughs> maybe, maybe it made me weird, and, but I think I turned out all right. And I was probably, God, I don't even know how old I was, maybe seven. Hi, I'm Dax, and this is What's Under the Bed, where I interview filmmakers, actors, and guests about horror movies. Please like, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to know when a new episode drops. If there's someone you think I should interview, please let me know in the comments. 